there, it's Natasha, and thank you so much for joining me again today. I have this die, which I have already just done a video on not too long ago. This is the Perfect Peonies, and I kind of wanted to show you a few different ways that you can use a die that is sort of set like this, and so... Obviously we can use it exactly as is and it is gorgeous that way and there's many different things that we can do just like this But I want to change up the look a little bit so that we do get a completely different look So this is the die and it is just one singular die one large die And here's the card that I created in my first video This was using a little bit of die cut inlay and lay it up a, a couple of different uh, die cuts as well and it gives some really nice good dimension and I really love that look. You could use any colors in the world to create um, some really fabulous looks. But today I am going to try something just a little bit different. Now just to start off with, I'm going to add a little bit of texture to my card front panel, sort of my background panel. Um, I have the tiles stencil here from Tim Holtz. Any stencil is going to add a little bit of texture and kind of something gentle going on in the background. So I'm starting off with a little bit of light yellow cardstock. And just so I don't get my work surface messy, I'll put it on a little bit of scrap paper. But I'm using some finger dobbers. These are my oxide finger dobbers. And I pretty much just kind of have roughly a light, a medium and a dark for most colors except I mean a couple that <laughs> if I sometimes I will lose one and I'll start a new one and accidentally and then just pop it in there anyway but in general I try to keep three um, for the oxides and then that way when I come to using any of the oxides I have a color that's almost similar I just wipe off any ink that might already be on the dauber and then I am good to go for this one, I did not even need to get out the ink pads. I'm just using the ink that is already on the dauber and I would say that this is probably a mustard seed color and I'm just adding a little bit. I don't want to kind of thoroughly do the background, but just kind of top left and bottom right corners um, are going to have just that little bit of extra stenciling, just a little bit. And of course, we're going to be putting some things on top of it, so um, it will kind of make sense later on. Now the die itself measures 3.9 inches by 5.9 inches, which is 9.9 centimeters by 15 centimeters. So it is really big and that gives us lots of great options as well. Uh, even though the size is a little bit bigger than what I would usually make for my four and a quarter by five and a half inch card bases, it still means we have a lot of wiggle room. Now I have some four inch mint tape here. This is just a low tech tape. And honestly, I do find this stuff really, really good when I am trying to keep all of the pieces together. Obviously you don't have to do die cut inlay with this at all, but if you choose to, then keeping those little pieces all in the right places is going to make your life a whole lot easier later on. So this is where we are actually going to cut apart the die cut and separate these two flowers. Now it is really obvious where they kind of separate. And the bottom part of that top flower that I'm creating is going to be kind of off my card base. So it'll make sense in a minute how this all kind of works out. Um, but I promise we will have two gorgeous flowers on here. And then I'm just going to stick them down to that little piece of low tech tape. And this is how I'm going to color them. So I know that <laughs> peonies don't necessarily come in blues, but today this is just what I felt like doing. So I'm taking some Salty Ocean Distress Oxide and I'm going to go over just the flower kind of portions. There are some leaves that of course come off the sides of these flowers, so I'm going to kind of leave those for the moment. Now for this part where I'm inking these up, you really don't have to have the low tech tape. Just because these flowers, these die cuts are kind of delicate, it makes life a lot easier and it means I'm not going to kind of crinkle them up or scrunch them up whilst I'm trying to colour these. You could also use things like watercolours or watered down acrylics or anything like that um, to colour these. You could use alcohol markers and of course that wouldn't be quite so harsh if you uh, didn't have the mint tape behind it. So just whatever medium you are comfortable with. Now these are all the kind of inside pieces and I'm going to color these with a little bit of tumbled glass distress oxide. So just two different shades of blue. And as I said, I know that these probably don't come in blue, but that's okay. That's the world of um, art and card making. We kind of have the freedom to do things that might not actually exist in real life. I still really like these cards and I like blue. Blue is my color, my favorite color. And I gravitate towards it a lot. But I also like that it's going to contrast nicely with the yellows that we chose for the background as well. 
So just making sure I don't move too many of these little pieces and I'm just using a little finger dauber to get pretty much um, even-ish color. It's not going to matter too much because these are going to be inlaid as well. Well, at least some of them are. Now I have another die cut here and there are many ways to do things. I think I probably went about this the long way a little bit because if I wanted to, uh, when I was coloring the dark blue, sort of the outline of the flowers, I could have masked off the leaves and done it that way. Um, but I just chose to have a whole nother die cut because I had one sitting there anyway. So I'm going to use some old paper in mowed lawn to kind of uh, get a couple of different colors on those and then I actually took the Rustic Wilderness um, Finger Dauber which is just a darker green and just did the very edges, very corners and then that gives a little bit of extra dimension on the leaves that are there and also there is a couple of little buds to the left hand side at the top there and so I did their stems and stalks uh, too as well. Now I'm just going to cut these apart. This part doesn't have to be uh, ultra perfect because this is going to go behind it and at this point I was just making sure that I had cut in the right place for which um, flowers, which leaves the flowers were going to be on. Now as I'm going through my card making process I like to keep checking to make sure that I'm kind of on track with my ideas and everything's going to fit roughly as I thought it would. So for this one I'm going to have one flower coming down from the top right and one coming in from the bottom left and because we turned that top flower around it's essentially upside down I guess you are not going to be able to see any of that kind of part where we had cut them apart. So you're not going to know that these originally were connected and they are going to appear as separate flowers. So now I'm going to pop the blue outline down on top of these ones and that is just, um, as I said, we could have done masking but I chose to just do this anyhow. And I do need to think about those two little buds up the top left there because I'm actually going to glue on the blue part but I had forgotten to cut off the blue part where the stem of the bud is. So I kind of just gently pull it apart and make sure that I have that little piece cut off so that appears green which we inked up on the lower die cut and then I can put the little blue bud up on top and the stems are green. Now I have the second flower to do and for this one I need to make sure that I cut off the leaves because as I said we had already uh, colored these for the lower die cut so if I just kind of follow them around and they don't have to be perfect there's not you're not going to be able to notice uh, depending on how thick or thin you make that extra little bit of flower so it doesn't have to be perfect at all. I use a makeup sponge with a little bit of liquid glue on the back and I find that that gets a really nice even amount of glue. I use the Ranger Multimedium in the matte finish and that's nice and strong so I know that these layers are not going to peel apart or kind of come up which is important when you are giving this card away. So I just keep reusing the same makeup sponge again and again and then once you are done with it for today then you can either wash it out under some warm water or you can just wait until it goes hard and then snip off just the very end and then that way you can keep reusing the sponge lots of times. Now just when I'm gluing on this top flower, all you have to do is make sure that the kind of end pieces where we separate the flowers are off the page, uh, which is not tricky at all. There's going to be plenty of flower of that top flower still showing, um, and then that way we can kind of cut off all those pieces that aren't... Um, aren't quite as perfect. So when I pop down these flowers I realize that most of the leaves are actually cut off which is fine but I always like a little bit of greenery on there so I decide that why waste what I have already colored. So I'm going to cut out one of these leaves and then just see if I can kind of lift it up gently to pop it underneath um, and then that way it kind of just adds that little bit more greenery too. Now here are the inlaid pieces and this is a quite a quick process when everything is kind of set up there nicely on the mint tape. So everything is exactly where it needs to go, it's not hard to follow, all I have to do is pick them up and pop them in like puzzle pieces. I just pop a little bit of liquid glue in each one of the little gaps and these are all nice big pieces so I don't need any tools or anything to do with it um, and I actually leave those smaller inner ones completely empty. That doesn't bother me and it's also too fiddly for me. <laughs> I don't mind um, doing some things but that is not right up my alley so if you have more patience than me then maybe you would um, but yeah I quite like that the center of the flower is left with a yellow poking through just a little bit. So I'm making sure to do that little bud up the top left as well at the moment. 
Um, I have turned this around just because this makes it easier for me to uh, orientate it when um, I have my little piece on the mint tape as well. And then once I have cut off all those little edges and everything is dry, I'm just going to stamp a really simple sentiment, a gorgeous happy birthday. And the card actually goes this way up. I like that big bold flower in the bottom left corner. And I'm just going to use the curly greetings to say happy birthday. Stamp this in some nice Versafine Onyx Black ink because it's going to leave a crisp, beautiful sentiment. And of course, this could be used for any occasion. A thinking of you or with sympathy or happy birthday or happy anniversary. Lots of beautiful occasions that this kind of card could be used for. And of course, you can change the color scheme to suit exactly whatever you need. So just to keep this super simple, I'm going to pop this straight down on a card base. I had some leftover glue that I had already squirted out. Um, so waste not, want not. I'm just going to use it up with my makeup sponge uh, on the back there. And otherwise, I would have just used the normal liquid glue anyway because it's going from paper to paper. And then once I put this down, it is going to leave a gorgeous little white border around the outside. And I quite like that on my cards. But here are the two cards which look slightly different using exactly the same die. Thank you so much for joining me. I will have all the links to the products in the description box below this video. Let me know which one is your favorite down in the comment section below this video. But other than that, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.